Dark Souls 1 is a diamond in the rough that you should give a try if you haven't already. It isn't going to be for everyone with its cryptic design, but for those who are willing to persevere or get good, Dark Souls can offer some of the most memorable moments in gaming. In a time when games were becoming more streamlined and user-friendly, Dark Souls took a bold step backward and said forget all that. Building on its Demon Souls roots, the game thrusts a player into a hostile foreign world and says good luck and not much else. Players are forced to learn the mechanics on their own, and proceed forward without ever really knowing why, almost as though they were playing a game from 1985 again. Combat is fairly slow and has a certain ebb and flow to it that's meant to teach players to time their actions appropriately and learn the patterns of enemy attacks. Each enemy has certain weaknesses that can be exploited whether it be through combat mechanics or level design, and overall Dark Souls feels as though it's a more modern take on old classics like Metroid, Castlevania, and Mega Man. While there are hiccups, the majority of the time a player's death will feel fair and as though it was the result of their own actions. Where Dark Souls 1 really shines is in its world building. The intro cinematic of the game really does a great job of drawing the player into the world, and it firmly establishes this isn't Middle Earth. The mythology of the game feels rich and gritty, perfectly leading into the opening sequence. While the path has been open to you, you'll need to break out of the Undead Asylum by blindly charging ahead using your own power. The game teaches you to expect traps and the unexpected, and while it might seem unfair at first, with experience, it's possible to avoid all these kinds of pitfalls by being patient and observant. In some ways, the story is pretty limited, so Dark Souls can be treated purely as an action arcade style game. But for those who want to dive into it, hours upon hours can be lost trying to decipher the text to gain a deeper understanding of the series. Basically, you'll get what you put into it, which can be a good or a bad thing depending how you look at it. That's kind of the core of Dark Souls. The more invested you are, the more it offers in return. There's a variety of optional and hidden content to keep players entertained for hours, and having the freedom to explore and approach the world as you see fit means the way players interact with the world may be different than their friends and allows for greater replayability. Ironically, this is also one of the game's greatest weaknesses. Because the game doesn't hold the player's hand, they're free to make mistakes over and over, and many of its intricacies and mechanics can remain undiscovered. This ends up creating an atmosphere that's more punishing to newer players, and more or less pushes people into looking up guides or video tutorials for answers. In my opinion, forcing players to look at external sources for information instead of simply playing the game is a design flaw, and it shouldn't be overlooked. By giving players freedom to do what they like, they're also given the freedom to make mistakes. This isn't necessarily a bad thing as it makes the players' actions have more weight to them, but the game is also burdened with draconian systems that make it either extremely tedious, painful, or outright impossible to correct some mistakes. For example, Dark Souls only allows the player to save in one slot at a time, so without using external sources there isn't a way to go back and redo sections of the game. This can be disastrous if a new player kills certain NPCs or invests in stats they don't need since there's no way to reallocate them. Naturally, most new players will want to try out different weapons or builds as they play, so they'll invest their stats to try out new equipment, only to find out later they've created a suboptimal build and will need to create an entire new character to optimize their play. At first this creates the image of a game with a lot of depth, but the reality is a lot of it is quite superficial since many possibilities are gated behind stat requirements, item availability, and upgrade costs that end up disproportionately affecting newer players. Much of this could be fixed with more merchants and a better item economy, as it would allow players more opportunities to upgrade and test different equipment, or get more use out of items that only veterans make full use of. As it is, items like throwing knives and firebombs lose their effectiveness quite early, and with inventory maximums already in place, there isn't really a reason so many items should be so prohibitively expensive. Putting that aside, while some areas can be done in different orders, much of the non-linearity of the game is really just linear game design hidden by the illusion of choice. There are some secrets one can discover from breaking the normal sequence of the game, but they're fairly negligible, and if one progresses too far from the beaten path early on, they can be jarringly stopped by certain walls of progression. While the game offers a lot the more you delve into it, the paths to reach certain goals are more rigid than one may expect. With certain tools locked behind obtaining specific boss souls or grinding for covenant items, even completing some of these builds can feel unnecessarily tedious without hope. Fortunately, if you've got a friend who can drop you what you need, it's possible to start a relatively new playthrough with what you want, but it's still inconvenient. Nonetheless, the basic gameplay loop of Dark Souls feels engaging and dynamic, but it's a little too easy for players to get lost. Despite that, its multiple endings, build options, and online multiplayer features add a lot of replayability, 
and it offers some of the most memorable experiences in gaming. If I were to look at games on a bell curve, I'd say the average enjoyable game would be a 5 out of 10, with flawed or below average games receiving a lower score and good games receiving higher scores. A 10 out of 10 game would be near impossible, and it would mean it represents the absolute pinnacle of gaming, and that I wouldn't add or change anything to what's already there. With this in mind, I'd give Dark Souls 1 a solid 7 out of 10, meaning it's a good game, but it's definitely not for everyone, and has flaws that can hinder the overall enjoyment of the experience. I respect the developer's decision to make a more hardcore, hands-free game, but it ends up being a bit too tedious or punishing in ways I don't think they fully intended. Regardless, there's something very special at the core of Dark Souls 1 that's difficult to articulate, and it's really by being immersed in playing the game that it can be seen. For all its flaws and rushed areas, there's a reason Dark Souls redefined an entire genre of gaming, and it's definitely worth checking out. There's more that can be said for sure, but I really don't want to spoil anything else for those who haven't played it yet, so if you think I missed something or you'd give it a different score, let me know in the comment section. Please consider liking and subscribing to my channel, and if you want to discuss more stuff related to Dark Souls, games, books, and movies in general, feel free to join the Discord server linked in the video description. As always, thank you to all my patrons, channel members, viewers, commenters, and subscribers. I appreciate it. Your support makes it easier for me to continue working on these kinds of projects, and I look forward to producing more. Until next time, last protagonist out.